Hello and welcome to this video on Aunt Ester synthesis. Now Aunt Ester synthesis is a series of chemical reaction that converts a carboxylic acid into the next higher homologue of the carboxylic acid. So if I start with a carboxylic acid RCOOH, then this carboxylic acid can be converted to the next higher homologue that is RCH2COOH. And this is not a single reaction, it's a series of reactions. And this series of reaction would be able to convert the carboxylic acid into the higher homologue of the acid. So the Arndt's ester synthesis is a series of chemical reactions designed to convert a carboxylic acid to a higher carboxylic acid homologue containing one additional carbon atom. And we call it the homologation process. So first of all, we convert a carboxylic acid into the activated part, which is the acid chloride. And we convert this into an acid chloride by using thionyl chloride. And we get the acid chloride here. <clears throat> the acid chloride then reacts with diazomethane, CH2N2. Ether is the solvent. And we are able to get a compound like this. This is called a diazoketone. The diazoketone undergoes hydrolysis in the presence of Ag plus to produce the next carboxylic acid RCH2COH, the next higher homologue. Now what we need to understand is that this R is attached to this carbon now in the product. We can see that the R is attached to this carbon and uh, there is an OH attached to the C double bond O and you get a higher carboxylic acid here. So the Arndt's ester synthesis allows the formation of homologated carboxylic acids or the derivatives by first reacting the activated carboxylic acid that is in the form of acid chloride. And this acid chloride would then react with diazomethane to produce diazoketone. And the subsequent reaction of the diazomethane to the carboxylic acid this is called the Wolf rearrangement. So let's see the mechanism of this reaction. We start with acid chloride. This is diazomethane. And this is one of the resonating structures of diazomethane. Carbon is nucleophilic, as we can see. It is going to attack the carbon, the carbonyl carbon. Pi bond shifts to O. It comes back and the Cl leaves substitution, nucleophilic and we get this compound. From here, the Cl- is going to pick up the proton and there is a rearrangement of the electrons and we get diazoketone with the removal of an HCl molecule. So this is a diazoketone. Now this is going to undergo Wolf rearrangement. And what is that is what we're going to see now. Uh, this is the diazoketone. It has a resonating structure like this. As you can see, the carbon is negatively charged, carbon anion. From a carbon anion, whenever a group leaves with this pair of electrons, nitrogen gas leaves, we get a carbene. So this is a carbene here. This undergoes rearrangement and it is this rearrangement in which the R attacks the carbon. So the R attacks the carbon and the pi bond attacks the carbonyl carbon and you get a rearrangement like this. It is a ketene. This is called a ketene. Now the ketene undergoes hydrolysis. Water attacks the carbonyl carbon again. Pi bond shifts to O and you get an intermediate like this. One of the O has a negative charge, the OH2 that is attached has a positive charge. There's a proton shift, intramolecular proton exchange is what we call it. And you get something like this. It's a geminal diol. And there is a double bond there on the carbon. This carbon has a double bond. It's got two OH groups, undergoes tautomerism. And the tautomerism results in the higher homologue of the carboxylic acid. Now, if instead of water, we had used water here, instead of water, if you use alcohol, 
then the only difference would be that here the OH would be actually the OR. So we will get an ester. So treat this with alcohol, we get an ester. If we were to treat the ketene with ammonia, we get amide. If we treat this with a primary amine, let's say, then we will be getting, let's say, R prime. This is RCH2, CO, NH, R prime. We get N substituted amide. So this is basically the ARNs ester synthesis. Typically, it is used to produce a beta amino acid from an alpha amino acid. Uh, if suppose I have uh, something like this, this is an alpha amino acid and we are going to get CH3, CH2, NH2. Another CH2 comes up. That's what arms ester synthesis does. And you get a beta amino acid. From an alpha amino acid, you get a beta amino acid here. So that's arms ester synthesis for you. Thanks for watching.